Um, oh no, I asked the name of the card, chat, the name of the card. The, uh, the... I, I, I do, I do just kind of want, like, another shock. I want to play the... Oh, maybe, maybe Wild Slash is better flame, than Flame Blast Bolts. Like, nobody plays Phoenix anymore. Why don't, why don't I just play Wild Slash? I can actually target my opponent. It's also, yeah, also way better with Light Up the Stage. Seems good. With Obosh, I get some number of Glory Bringers in there. I think I actually want to cut some lands. <laughs> the more I'm thinking about it. That cut the four drops. Spike, go ahead and just throw some five drops in there. Just just slap some five drops in there, Spike. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, I, yeah, I kind of want to cut, like, the... I think I'm going to put 23 lands. I don't know what I would play for it, though. Glorybringer, huh? Kind of land out of five drop. Maybe 24 lands is fine. We have the Obosh. We really want to hit our land drops. We have Fable. Chandra. Den of the Bugbears. Mana Sinks. Ramming up Ruins. Spikefield Hazard. Yeah. I think we don't have enough creatures for Kumano. Why not play a second Shokas on our mountain? This is like legendary land, is why. <laughs> Castle seems pretty free. I don't know. We do have nine non-mountain lands. And we don't have that many creatures. You could probably play one. I think you play one. And then I think I am kind of down for... Um, yeah, what, sorry, what, what was, the, what's the, the ping, the MDFC ping? Someone just said it. Sick, thank you for the two months, appreciate ya. Spikefield Hazard. Castle, oh gosh. I gotta return the cards. Actually, hold on. Horseshoe with the five pack. Hell yeah, thank you so much. Gotta get for some horseshoe, make, horse suit, make sure to thank them. Another zombie deck tech, probably. <laughs> Yes, another zombie, another zombie deck deck from Horseshoot. Eyeball, think of the 12 months. So let me, let me get this uh, trade going, do the deck tech while we wait for the cards. I feel like these are good changes. Spike, who's the longest sub? Um... I'm not sure. It's it's either Mickey or Matthew. I don't know who's sub first between them. I think my first ever subscriber was Archmage, but I don't know if Archmage is still subscribed. I think it was probably Mickey was the first subscriber. Or the longest subscriber now. I spoke. I spoke was one of the founders. If you got a founder badge, you're one of the first ten. Grab the fancy calculator, do the math. Playing a second circus is almost entirely upside. Yeah, it's almost entirely upside. And then there's, it's got like the very small downside of losing the freaking game because you drew two of your legendary lands and you have to mulligan or you can't, you know, you legends rule your land, you know? It's like, I understand that it's, there's, you know, <laughs> The downside is really small, but when it happens, it's devastating, and I don't think that the, uh, like, the, 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 I don't think the math necessarily can account for that, right? Ray, through the five months? Let, through two months, appreciate you as well. Like, and like, one, like, one thing you have to understand is, like, you almost always just play Shokazan as a land. You, I, I imagine that you play Shokazan out of a land uh, 19 times out of 20, if I, 95% uh, of the time. And so, like, the fact that, like, 
oh, if I draw two, then I'll just channel the second one is, you know, it's just, it's just not really like that big a deal, I think. <laughs> it's kind of a greedy hand to keep. We cut a land. No, we didn't cut. We're, we're at 24 effectively. I'm going to keep. We got to play with fire to scry. But I've, I've also seen it happen, right? It, it happened. I, I, I don't know if it was a video I was recording or a stream, but I, I have I have seen my opponents have to legend rule their Shokazans in the mono red decks. I've seen it happen. <laughs> Easy draw land. Don't forget the upkeep stop. I don't think I was ever uh, casting on my upkeep, especially with the elf in there. Cobalt, thank you for the five pack. If you got a gift, got a lot of gifts to subs today. I do appreciate you guys. We've got a gift to stuff from Col Six Alts. Make sure to thank them. Okay. If I draw a land, I'm probably just gonna do a Chandra play with fire. I can't believe I drew runner runner lands. <laughs> so lucky. And a resub. 55 subs to miss out, sticking to your guns. Yeah, I always stick to my guns. <laughs> what a draw. Shokinzon? Oh, am I, am I just not pronouncing the N? Sokinzon. Swift Spear, Ping, Light Up the Stage. They have to chump block here. It seems like the game is pretty over. Now it is officially over. Winota is a bad deck, actually. <laughs> Winota is the worst deck in Pioneer. Uh, I'm going to bring in the Rending Volleys. I also think Rampaging Frostodon is probably very good in this matchup. Um, the, they're mostly, I think, in the sideboard for the Anvil deck, because I, I feel like you can't really beat Anvil without Frostodon. Um, and I think what I want to do is go down to, like, one Chandra just to kill and cut my own Fables. Let's be a bit more leaner, a bit more meaner. Oh, sorry. I forgot your... I forgot uh, Horse Roots deck tech and... Co six alts. <laughs> if you uh, if you had one too, you can get one then. This is a deck tech stream. Okay. Well, you gotta take Zom Oh, Zom Bliss. Zom Bliss. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Well, I'll be working on this archetype too. Um, I don't think that you need to be on like a bunch of main deck tragic slips. I'm I I'm of the opinion. That um, I, if I'm going to play a removal spell in a deck like this, I want it to be Grist. And um, your, but your Mayhem Devils and your Goblin Bombardments and your Furies, I think, give you enough main deck removal that you don't need to main deck for Tragic Slip. I think Body Dropper is not good. I think this card is very fragile, very slow, requires your engine to be going to be good. And, like, your engine is good by itself. I don't think you need to play a card like Body Dropper. Um... I, I think I would be on four double hierarch, zero body dropper, zero tragic slip, four goblin bombardments. Um, and it, it, you, I think you definitely want the fourth bombardment if you have both Fury and Season Pyromancers because you can just pitch extra copies. I would play the fourth Season Pyromancer too. So minus four, minus four, plus two, plus one, plus one, plus one. And then you can maybe put Grist, like three Grists in there for the other like three slots you have. Maybe you only have two slots, two or three slots. I'm also not like, like, like I also like the thing about Body Dropper and Squirrel too is like in order for these cards to be good, you have to have Blood Gas plus Bombardment. Um, and I, I don't know, it's just like so much mana. I, I think, I think I kind of like to try to stay away from those cards in these kind of decks.
Because like you, you just have access to other like in, more individually powerful cards that don't need to have like these highly <coughs> synergy needed cards in the deck. You know what I mean? Like this bombardment plus blood gas is good on its own, and like to like also kind of need a squirrel for a squirrel to need those cards to be in play together for it to be good. I think is just unnecessary. And maybe I'm underestimating the, like the amount of times that those cards will be like fine together. Could be worth playtesting. Brant, the four months, appreciate ya. Got any modern obrus? Yeah, I, I will be playing some ob and modern. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure the best way to put it together, but I'll, I'll have it ready by the time we get our hands on the card. If I drop a squirrel, then I should be playing Gravecrawler and Augur. Um, I mean, the, do you have enough zombie synergies for those cards though? You could be doing that. Like ob and zombies is maybe just fine. Oh, that's true. That, Ragavan, the squirrel doesn't grow on fetches. It does not grow on fetches. It does grow on Ragavan treasures. That, that is true. The opponent is Stomblin. Guess I'm going to Obosh. Would I rather play Blazing Shoal or KCI? I, I, <laughs> if I had to unban either Blazing Shoal or KCI, it's like easy Blazing Shoal. Cause like at the very least, like you're either like dead immediately, or you kill you know you solitude their Inkmoth Nexus and they're dead immediately. Like it was a big problem with KCI that turns would take like thirty minutes. Um, keeping this hand. Think more supported in the challenge of good matchup knowledge or get lucky matchups. <laughs> well, one the thing about that is like one of those two things you can control, right? One of those two things you can control. You can learn and get get better matchup knowledge. You can't control how lucky your matchups are, but uh, if I could pick one, I would get. I would just have you know all good matchups. <laughs> but you can't choose to have all good matchups unless you play uh, Boggles. So playing against just guys to didn't see. Oh, I should definitely should play my land first. No. Why is Boggles not a good game anymore? <laughs> I know I just made this joke. It actually just like has very few good matchups. There's a lot of like living in in the format, L living in Titan. Uh, for the longest time, there's a million engineered explosives and cyborgs too. Um, Force of Vigor is a really common card that you have a hard time beating. Dress Dead, Dress Down is a big problem. Prismatic Ending is a big problem. There's just kind of like no end to, to problems. Which is a bad place to be. Okay, I'm going to cast Bone Crusher Giant because it actually attacks through the Karyatid. Yeah, keep us uh, your link in the tech in the chat. Shadow, take a look. Yeah, Shadow Spear. Yeah, Shadow Spear also turns off hexproof. Like th here's here is the like thought process. Like here is like the path every single Boggles Boggles player has taken in the last like year. Oh, I nobody was playing Boggles. I and there's like a lot of like Ragavan decks and stuff. I bet Boggles is secretly broken. I'm gonna take down this tournament with Boggles. And then they go, ah, living in prismatic ending, force of vigor, shadow spear, all these engineered explosives, dress downs. These are all of the format. Ah, there's also like Titan decks, Belcher decks are just killing me. It's just, it's just, the format is just like randomly really inhospitable to boggles. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. And I, I imagine a few people in the, uh, in the chat have had uh, the same experience. Same deck a week, couple minor changes. Okay. This looks a lot better. I'm, I think I would probably be like inclined to play a main deck uh, endurance in this metagame. I don't think it's that. I don't think that's something that I, I would describe as mandatory or anything. But living in is really popular with in your Eldarmy's call deck. A main deck endurance would go a long way. Um. Could potentially cut fourth Ren and Six, third Elvish Reclaimer, fourth Noble Hierarch to do that. But I, I do think that that's something that you want to get in there. You also probably want to play a Naya Triome over Rogren. 
Uh, I think I think you want to play a Naya Triome over Rogren and then still play the Katria Triome. When and once those come out very soon. And I would probably play the Dranith Magistrate over Lavinia so it doesn't get uh, Bone Crusher Gianted and Fire Iced. But rest of the deck, deck looks very good. Um, I, I, you might want to also play, like, if you move the second Endurance to the main, you could you could maybe play 4th Retreat Decora Hum in the sideboard and board those in against Triton, Titan Tron and other combo decks so that you have the ability to try to be a bit more fast. No, you need the main deck Solitude too. I, I, yeah, I would cut the. I, th I think I would cut the fourth Hierarch for an endurance. Thoughts about Neo Modern format which extends Eighth Edition. Eighth Edition to RTR. <laughs> and Winter Twin is legal, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 my, my knowledge of Magic is not so encyclopedic that you can say. Spike, what about Neo Modern and it's 8th edition to RTR? And I can, like, imagine what that looks like. <laughs> maybe you're maybe you're big brain enough to, like, <laughs> imagine what that looks like. I don't know, fucking know. Yeah, Jolt, if you'll post a look in chat, I'll take a look. We're def we're a Ford in this house, boys. <laughs> um. Okay, light up the stage again. This four color went to Bant Trium. I think almost definitely, yeah. Uh... Red to the tier one, appreciate ya. So we got one for Cole, six. Jolt, target on combo. So I've been playing this mono red, um, more aggressive deck with like um, gear per aether grid. And I, I, I've played Mayhem Devil in like these artifact sacrifice decks in the, in the past. I think it's a trap. It's like kind of hard to assemble your artifact engine and then play Mayhem Devil, and then have your opponent just, like, not kill your Mayhem Devil. It's also it's also true that, like, um, Cat Oven plays way better with Daredevil than, um, than Asmo does, where, like, at, if you don't have a sack outlet for your food tokens, it doesn't matter how many you have. The Mayhem Devil just doesn't do anything. I know you have Greater Gargadon, too. Like, that's somewhat playable, but I would definitely recommend playing Disciple of the Vault over Mayhem Devil. Just being one mana makes it so much easier to take advantage of. But yeah, but I've I've spent so long on these kind of decks. Like you also, if you're gonna play a red black artifact type type um, sacrifice deck in modern, you need to play Oni Cult Anvil. That card is just too good to not to not play. Um, and I would probably recommend to you either playing this list. This list, with, and both of these are in the stream decker. But um, Red Black Anvil, this is a deck I've spent a lot of time working. Your mana curve is just really low. I think that um, if you want to be more like ping focused, uh, value based, like this is the way to go. I think that Asmo is not the correct card to play in this version. But if you do want to be a more aggressive deck, you can play this mono red version. That I've been working on, and I would I would also recommend this. You can find both these lists in the Stream Decker. I think both are good, but this one's more aggressive. The other one's more grindy. <clears throat> okay. Um, wait, my opponent's passing. What's sad about this is, <laughs> um, what's sad about this is, my opponent bricking this hard is such a rare thing. It's such a rare thing for the Lotus Field deck to just like, or the, the Ascendancy deck to just brick this hard, and we, we can't kill them. We can't untap and kill them. And then I'll do the uh, the other deck deck in a second. Thank you for your patience on these. And then, Joel, thank you for your subscription. And Red Glory, thank you for your subscriptions too. Okay, well, if my opponent's not going to do anything.
Um, first impressions, I like the list, I think. I think it looks pretty good. I think this is a good shell for Ob. Um, I'm not like sold necessarily on these Burning Tree Emissaries. They're interesting. I think that they play well with Ob. They play well with Gallia. I'm not sure if there's if there's if this is the best option you have available to you though. If there's potentially something better. Yeah, I, I guess I guess kind of one thing I don't like is I don't like playing Elder Gargroth in the main deck of what is otherwise a super aggressive strategy, right? You're playing Rabble Bastards, War Bosses, you're playing Ob, and then you just have these like Gargroths, which are good in Pioneer, but they they're not they don't fit your cohesive aggro game plan. So I, I think I would much rather see these Gargroths in the sideboard. Um, I think I'd much rather see these Gargroths in the sideboard, and maybe just actually play. Like the twenty first lands and like the fourth Gallia or the fourth Ob. Yeah, I think I played the twenty first land. Oh, you also uh don't have any Blood Crips? That doesn't seem right. Yeah, I think I'll just play four Blood Crips over the Urborgs and Woodland Cemeteries. And then maybe play Black green fast land over the rootbound crags, and then you can keep in the crag crown pathways still probably. <laughs> Another one for Aram. Uh, oh, should I concede to this? I should probably concede to this. Okay, I think those are my thoughts. Cyborg's uh, cyborg's like kind of hard to comment too much on. I don't think I like Riveteer's Charm as a cyborg card. I would just main deck it or not play it at all. Yeah, maybe I should be playing Damping Sphere over Alpine. Oh, I lose the Obosh. But Damping Sphere over Alpine Moon like gives me so much more equity in this matchup specifically. I think I'm just gonna well maybe I'll play like Lanterns over Fables. Can at least like interact with their dick through times. But Arian Food Posters in the chat. There we go. Rats. <laughs> Love it. So you probably want Giganta as a companion. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how serious this is, but I feel like Relentless Rats is probably better than Rat Colony. <laughs> uh, I need a need a one mana creature. Need a fast hand. We have we have it here. Sand's very good. Could put back the Spike Field Hazard. Yeah, I would play Relentless Rats over Rat Colony. <laughs> and I have no other sweet tech for you, but maybe play an Eldrazi in your sideboard so you at least have a good mill matchup. Although, no, you don't even have a good mill matchup because they just surgical your rats. <laughs> they just surgical the rats every single time. Oh, that's a good draw. One of pack rat. <laughs> Sideboard the pack rats. <laughs> Cut thrumming stone, play Mori. Hmm. Hmm. Then you can play pack rat too. <laughs> yeah, cut cut thrumming stone for pack rat. Then play Mori. Genius. Thrumming stone's terrible anyways. <laughs> You're never untapping with it. Thoughts on Dredge currently? Dredge is pretty good, I think. So I'm attacking my opponent for six. Down to seven. I think I don't play this spike field hazard because it's like if I if I draw any one mana instant sorcery, I'm killing my opponent next turn. And I, I think I I do just mostly want to prioritize killing my opponent. Thoughts on unlicensed hers. I like that card a lot. I think it's gonna see a lot of play in Pioneer, some play in Modern. Um, that card I think is great. So now we force a chump block with the carry tid, which is great. They're gonna have four cards in their graveyard, which means we don't really need to pop the lantern of the lost, because if their whole turn next turn is um cast a treasure cruise, we win.
Another carry Tid. Can be hard for them to, to win. I'm gonna play my Chandra, and then I'll probably just, assuming this resolves, we'll tick up Cast Light of the Night X equals zero. Well, I guess I, I guess I don't need to cast it because I just ticking up turns the puts them to two life. I have a two, two, one, two threes. Like the knight doesn't actually change anything, so I guess I'll probably just sack the lantern. But game ends. We go to game three. Maybe we'll play a Frostodon over the Fable. Oh, too late, I guess. This Fable seems pretty bad in this matchup. Keep. Don't like it that much. Put them all to six, though. I'm addicted to playing bad modern decks. What do I do? Sounds like you're in the right place, actually. <laughs> Sounds like you're in the right place. Word of consistent playing Obosh, losing Eidolon. Uh, I actually wasn't playing Eidolon. This is like a more mid rangey, grindy version than like the existing mono red lists. I was playing like Chandra in the other version. But Obosh is like one of the better companions anyways. I, I think it's probably pretty good to build a deck like this. The more I'm thinking about it. You also can't play um, Shatter Skull Smashing, which is doesn't cost you that much. And it's like kind of good against the, the elf decks. But not a huge loss. There are a lot of deck decks. If I miss yours, just yell at me. Or, but please be honest. <laughs> okay, there's ascendancy. Take my point for six down to ten. Bone Crusher, Spike Field, Hazard Hit. So that's going to be three plus six, which means we're going to be one point short of lethal next turn. Unless we draw a one mana burn spell. Okay, never mind. Oh, this is the, this is the Adventure Zone. Sorry, sorry, thank you. Kind of hard to keep track of it all. <laughs> Okay, Bone Crusher just on Adventure. We weren't winning the game next turn anyways. Um, probably better to play Skull Scar Mage than it is to Spike Field Hazard them for one. Can I explain why Sinisi decks are playing Dig over Cruise? I played a lot of Just Guys Sinisi and Cruise's extra cards loot away. It was always better than Dig Selection before. Um... I, I would say that the reason why they're playing Dig Over Cruise is that every Pioneer player just copies the most recent 5-0 list. Um, that being said, I haven't been playing the Just Guy Ascendancy deck much, so I can't tell you for sure that it's better to build a deck that way. Um, I would say it's very close. I agree historically Cruise has been better. It's possible that like needing to like dig for Sylvan Awakening specifically is a good reason to play Cruise and like set up your combo faster. Dig probably lets you like more consistently kill on turn 4. Um, which is maybe relevant in like the Winota Lotus Field meta game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Narset, yeah. Nar Narset. I think Narset would be like the biggest tiebreaker there. Dig, dig, not getting got by Narset is a huge, hugely important thing. I feel. Okay, we are not dead to this, but the I think the next spell kills us. No, two more spells kill us. Okay, my opponent's not even bothering floating mana, which is does, <laughs> is maybe like not a great reason to concede, but <laughs> I think if they're not bothering to float mana, we're 100% dead. I think we can keep this hand. Is the one four fox legal? You have to be like the slight, the, the, like the tiniest bit more specific. Okay, this probably takes one of my two value three drops. Pathway Thoughtseize is likely red, black, mid range. Could be Anvil. Not playing Gigantho, playing Meat Hook Massacre. Blink Cat. 
Yeah, I mean, that card's not a fox, it's a uh, Felder Guardian. Yeah, the, if, yeah, I think Guardian is banned and Sahili is legal. <laughs> okay, well, I'd love to see my opponent take play with fire, and I just draw it. And this will help me cast my Obosh. Okay, they take Chandra. I'm not gonna play with fire to scry. Okay, pretty good exchange. Yeah, there's gonna be a new Sahili combo with the the new the new staff. I kind of have, have a hard time imagining that that combo is gonna be better than Winota Lotus Field Ascendancy, but it could be, could be. It's also a three card combo. I feel like your deck has been seeing the three mana value, Hasty, two, two, Renown, those two for non-creature cast by opponent. Could help swing a Ascendancy matchup. The problem with that card is Ascendancy plays Sylvan Carrieted. Oh boy. The problem with that card is Ascendancy plays Sylvan Carrieted and Lotus Field plays a Boreal Grazer. So it's just like, in both matchups, your opponents just have like pretty easy job blocking your 2-2 forever, right? What's the new Sahili combo? Okay, so there's this new staff uh this new equipment that I, I can't remember exactly how it works so it, it equips you a planeswalker and it makes the planeswalker a creature uh with power and toughness equal to the number of counters on it and so if you put that on the sahili that can minus to copy the one that you know combos with felder guardian then um you can minus on itself and if you minus on itself you minus on itself then uh it makes an artifact copy and then the new copy can target itself because it's an artifact and so that lets you put infinite permanence into play you know make infinite game objects which doesn't win the game by itself but you can win the game with this combo by you know putting like a altar of the brood into play and that's this is the the new combo it's kind of interesting i i personally don't don't really expect it to be that competitive um, but it is a new pioneer combo and, uh, you know, <laughs> every time I talk about, uh, <laughs> every time I talk about how much I dislike the Lotus Field deck, everybody's like, Spike, think of the combo players. <laughs> so maybe, uh, this will satiate the, those complaints. Card waiting a new Capina to build inverted reanimator. The the draw two discard one at instant speed. That card lets you play with counter spells really well. Dude, if they minus if their last card's fatal push. Okay, it's not. Would have been such a blowout though. It's a Croxa, okay. Croaks is a pretty good last card for them to have here. So I get to kill Chandra, hit them for one. Then they get to escape Kroxa. Yeah, I, I agree that Lotus Field is probably fine until Besaidu. I think Besaidu and to like a lesser extent Oda War I push the deck over the top. But we're, sorry, we're not talking about today. We're not talking, nobody respond to this. We're not doing this again all day, every stream, complaining and whining about Lotus Field. Oh, it's about that time again. If you copy the creature land, it, enter, it both enters tapped because you control two or more lands and it enters as a land. So not the best. So if I copy B Bone Crusher Giants, fire up Den with the Bugbear, I'm attacking, they block one, they take eight. Eight plus four is not lethal. So I'll cast this. Hmm. Okay, we're getting in. Can you kill me? Can you summon three damage out of nowhere? Another Kroxa beats me. 
Graveyard Trespasser doesn't do it though. This gains them a life, but I'm hitting them for four with the Light of the Night next turn. Was it better to kill Kroxa? I couldn't kill Kroxa. Oh, I, I could have, sorry, I could have dealt two dead to this. Um, maybe it was better. I kind of like the idea of just like saying, all right, I'm dead to a second Kroxa, good luck. But that, that was maybe better, yeah. Any YouTube video of rogues coming out soon? I, I put one on Channel Fireball. I think they posted it. I'm not sure. They, 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 they did post it. Yeah, there's one on Channel Fireball. There's probably, there's probably one or two on my YouTube uh, channel too. I don't know if there's any new ones, if you're asking about ones beyond those. On the draw against Rakdos mid-range, this hand is probably a mulligan. It's close though. I can keep this. Yeah, I can keep this. I can put back Play With Fire. <laughs> Do not duress my Spike Field Hazard. <laughs> no. <laughs> they saw the line. I just immediately draw a mountain. Easy. Easy, actually. Probably just want to try to cycle this. Hit my third land for uh, Fable or Bone Crusher. <clears throat> Mold getting on the draw, though. Get two for one. It's kind of tough. They only have two cards left in their hands. Hmm. Okay, hopefully they don't have a red removal spell. This light of the stage could get us right back into this game. All right, not too bad. Take it. Don't like the trespasser as much. I guess I'll light up the night discarding light up the night. <laughs> It may be better to discard Bone Crusher. I'm not 100% sure. This deck is just interaction and two for ones. Yeah, this is uh, you know, me adapting uh, blue white control into mono red. It's a really good draw. So I can attack through the Bone Crusher Giants. And play a mage. I still have Obosh too. Yeah, Dark Souls Citadel is not on Arena, so I, I'm surprised too because that card's been printed so many times. But you can't just port the Fire's deck into Arena, unfortunately. Let me go for the Obosh. Yeah, ca Cascading Cataracts is, um, but like having only four Indestructible Lands is kind of tough. I'm an Enfranchised Arena player. Can I build the Golos Fires deck minus Citadel? Do you think it still functions with four Indestructible Lands? You, you can build it. Uh, it's also true. Oh wait, oh, wait. Fires functions as normal in that format, right? It's not uh, Alchemied. Yeah, you can build it. Like it's 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 um it's going to be different. But like if you if you like the Mono Red Fires deck, I think. I think giving it a go is fine. Ooh. Um, do I want to trade a Swiss Spear for a Goblin? I think, I, I think I'm just going to take it. With the Obosh in my hand, I, I think I'm pretty likely to be ahead in this race. Okay, and then the double block would have been a big blowout. Obosh is, like, really hard to kill. This is kind of like what I've learned from playing Gigantha. Five mana, five toughest creatures. Good luck killing that. <laughs> Good luck killing that. They draw a pathway for turn. They have access to Din, Castle Lock Dwayne. Kind of brick here. I think I'll just play Bone Crusher, Swiss Spear Pass. It is a problem that they now get to, like, untap and... They have Shaman to copy the Bone Crusher. 
They're also dead if we draw Chandra. If they can't kill Obosh, we draw Chandra just to kill. Then we get to um, deal them nine damage exactly, right? Yeah. Oh no, it's ten. It's two from the Chandra peeing, then eight from the Light of the Night. Feed the Swarm on Obosh, going down to four. It's pretty risky. <laughs> Mm. Four blockers, five attackers, channel this into turn. Alter the Brew gets found by Saga. Maybe that's the build. Well, it's not legal in uh, Pioneer versus Saga. I think this combo is probably not going to be good enough for Modern either. But if you were going to build it to Modern, I, I agree you would play Urza Saga. Why not face? Why not face? <laughs> Why not face? So if I fire up the din. Okay, so I'm gonna go to combat. They're gonna copy the Bone Crusher Giant. Block Bone Crusher, Swift Spear, Swift Spear. Fire up Din the Bugbear, block here. Not lethal. Maybe we should stomp this. Yeah, I kind of like killing the Reflection, because it's going to turn off the extra blocker. It's going to stop them from being able to attack with the four threes. I got time, too. I feel like I've got... I'm like... A, my top decks are better than theirs. I'm getting really close to Alpha Striking. This is fine. Do devotion decks work in modern? Um, I have like a mono red devotion deck list in Pioneer that I kind of like. Against Cory? Wait, which Cory is this? <laughs> oh, damn, is this Pioneer? I thought you had a modern deck. <laughs> yeah, this is Pioneer. Botmaster? Cool, cool, cool. You're good, you're good. <laughs> yeah, if this were modern, I, I would play Lightning Bolt. <laughs> hmm, well. I guess I'm gonna try to find a red source off the light up the stage. Fuck. It's just fine, it's fine, it's fine. Next turn's gonna be, it's gonna be great. We got. Play with fire for this. We can play this as land if we need to. When I, I sold my modern collection, my whole my whole like legacy modern collection like five or six years ago, and when I was rebuilding it, um, like two or three years ago, the very first thing I bought was uh, four and black border Japanese lightning bolts. The very first thing. Yeah, I was definitely hoping that this is what they do. Obviously, you know, them just getting to block with it is pretty good. We get to ping, we get to shock the elf and then play this tapped. When Pioneer's on MTGA, do I plan on switching over for Pioneer games? Uh, it's unlikely, but like, it kind of depends on, like, I mean, what what is it, like, I, one thing I, I think that leagues are way better for gameplay than just the latter. Like, it feels like you're playing for something, you get to, like, cash out. I think the competition on Magic Online is, on average, a bit higher than Arena, in my experience. Um, but if for some reason, the, uh, you know, I, I'm not really expecting this to be the case, but if for some reason um, Arena ends up being, like, the better client to play on for some reason then yeah but um we'll just have to evaluate the pros and cons but I, I, like if things don't change I, I really doubt arena is gonna for some for some reason be the better client to play on like the the economy is really bad like in my like e, like in my experience like playtesting for the like the pro tours even even like in the highest level mythic or whatever it is i i would i would still just like play against like it, like the games, the games would feel like a lot less competitive than they than they would on, on Magic Online. 
That, that always kind of surprised me, but... That was always my experience, is that Arena just felt like the competition wasn't as harsh. And like, and, then, and that's probably like the symptom of like, games being free to play, you know. Okay, we're just gonna send in. Cavalier can eat one of these guys, I guess. Yeah, players are locked into a deck. And that's, I guess that's the other thing too. It's like, like I like do I like why would I spend um, hundreds and hundreds of dollars to build an arena collection to play a format that I could just use my rental service on Magic Online, you know? So, so something would something would have to change for me to play uh, Pioneer on Arena. Something might change though. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I agree that Myth Mythic just, like... Yeah, Mythic was pretty easy to get uh, when I was gr grinding for the PTs. It didn't take that long, usually. Okay, they can flashback Storm the Festival next turn. I'm flooding a bit. I think that's better than Soul Scar Mage Obosh. The number of mythic spots are harder to hit. They are they are harder to hit, yeah. But I don't know. I I, I, I still like. It didn't take that long to get there for me, at least. But it was it was also really obnoxious too. Like so, they would give you these like fully stocked accounts for the for the PTs for arena. And when I was playtesting, it 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 did take you like a day to get to mythic of grinding. And I always thought it was so dumb that like they didn't just start those accounts off in mythic. Because like I just I just feel like you like I did have to waste like you know set like a, a day worth of playtesting just grinding to get to mythic and like the playtesting before you get to mythic is just kind of a joke too. It was just like useless and it's it's like especially frustrating in that time frame because you only had like a week and a half two weeks with the account to playtest and as someone who like wasn't playing a lot of pioneer or sorry, wasn't playing a lot of arena it was really hard for me. What MTGO subscription service is good to use? Uh, the, the the two main ones, I don't know if there are even any other ones, but it's Mana Traders and Card Hoarder. For the most part, for new players, I think Card Hoarder is the better deal. Mana Traders deal becomes better over time, but it's also true that Card Hoarder isn't, doesn't always accept uh, new people into the payment plan, So, but Mana Traders, I think it lets everybody in. You get better testing partners. Better testing risk partners than on the ladder, yeah. I, I mean, that's what I should have done. It's just always been like, I don't know. Like when I when I'm, I'm I, I stream and I talk to people all day, so like I, I didn't really want to be like, you know, also like having to like <laughs> talk to somebody else and do all the testing. I, I should have hit up like tutors or, or um, Doom Wake back then, and I think tutors was qualified back then. I may be misremembering. <coughs> done some play testing with them. I will say my playtesting did go really well. Like, I think I had, like, had a really cracked pi uh, Historic Brew. I had, like, an okay green red list and standard. My standard testing could have been better, I guess. Why don't I hit up Gab? <laughs> I don't, Gab's out of my league, you know what I mean? <laughs> Gab's out of my league. <laughs> this mono green deck's pretty good, huh? Gab yeah, does a podcast with Harry. Harry's out of my league too. It's also like, uh, like <laughs> Gab is. I mean, Gab at the very least is like playing standard at the highest level in the entire world. Has been like really enfranchised in the MPL. Like if we're talking about this time frame, and it's like, hey, best player in the world, you want to help me learn standard? <laughs> it's just like I, I would have to put in some work. <laughs> What decks does Mono Green struggle against? Mono Red is actually pretty good against Mono Green. Uh, Auras is good against Mono Green. We stumbled a bit here. I think we lost the die roll. Obviously, you can lose. Niv is good against Mono Green. Um, I think that uh, Jeskai is... I, I, I'm, I wonder what the Jeskai Ascendancy uh, matchup is like against Mono Green, too. Do we have to do a particular matchup on ladder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. I understand. And again, like, you know, this was a while ago. I played the last Arena PT. We know it was good against Mono Green. Yeah, I think that's true too. I think that's true. This is a. I would never attack here. <laughs> I would never make this. I mean, it doesn't matter that much, but it's like, 
You just you win if you untap. You don't you don't need to attack this turn. You can wait a turn. <coughs> just make sure I don't top deck anything weird. <laughs> yeah, mono mean. Obviously, it doesn't matter that much. Okay, um. I think I'm playing Rampaging Ferocidon over the Fables and clicking Submit. I, I think the other version of Mono Reds, though, like not not like the more stock versions, the, the, the ones that are lower to the ground are, are definitely better against Mono Green. Is the opponent Taco Salad someone I face a lot? This is apparently Cory uh, Bowmaster, who I'm, I'm friendly with. I just didn't realize this was uh, his username. J Mac, thank you for the nine months. Appreciate you. Is Alpine Moon not good enough? Yeah, do not bring an Alpine Moon against Lotus Field. Just kill kill their kill their creatures and stuff, and keep them off Devotion that way, or just race them. Alpine Moon is not worth a card here. Have you brewed any modern Rare with new cap release? Um, yes and no. I will have I will have uh, brews. Totally it's totally hammered out. Uh, once the release happens, but to be honest, like I don't have anything like super solidified yet. I've got ideas, I've started to work on them, none of them are finished, but I, I have until Thursday. I have until Thursday, okay? <laughs> maybe uh, maybe Wednesday. Uh, the Alpine Moons are the sideboard for the Lotus Field matchup, which is the scariest matchup in the land. They do so good devotion from Troll when it dies. Troll is really good. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can... Should I get through this whole paragraph, Magus? <laughs> I don't know that I can. <laughs> it feels like... I just feel like I see a long paragraph from Magus and I know it's just all bait. So if I cast Light the Knight for zero, effectively... This is going to be 6, 10. Put my opponent to 4. Then they're dead. They're, they can't really beat the light of the night next turn. How was black green or black red or good spawn green devotion? It's like okay. Kind of depends on how many swim and removal you have. Spike bit next to that lowest field. Oh, sorry. Yes. Sorry. I did, I did misspeak. You, you want Alpine Moon for Lotus Field. You don't want to bring it in against Nykthos. Thank you. The best aspiring Spike Chatters <laughs> know what I mean. <laughs> when I Not what I actually say. I think this game is a pretty good example of how like Mono Red versus Mono Green goes a lot of the time. Game 3 on the draw can be pretty tough, though. Could a copy of Embercleave an idea in this deck? Um... Yes, you can play Embercleave and Mono Red, but you have to be way more creature heavy than this version is. Uh, but you you can you can build the deck to be more creature heavy. That's fine. Kind of a weaker hand. We're on the draw. We have a Wild Slash. I think we're supposed to keep. It's maybe better to play Soul Scarmage there. I'm not actually hundred percent sure. And then go like next turn Swiss Spear Shock, but. You know, historically, shock the shock the elf is the uh, the way to go, right? Hmm. They're blocking every time here. There's not much, I think, point in bluffing. Two ca two cards in hands. Lots of mana though. One of their two cards, I think, is a mana elf. I don't think that they would pause that long with that without one of their two cards being like an Elvish Mystic. But they just want to leave Carry back to block instead of playing it. I could be wrong. Maybe I just... It, it, it's like way too easy to like read into like pauses like that, to be honest. And just like my opponent was <laughs> doing anything else. Okay, they do hit a forest. They don't uh, mill over a Storm the Festival. Okay, I'm going to play the Swiss Spear. I'm going to attack with everything. If they want to eat a one-drop with Cavalier, they're not blocking the Frostodon. Seems worth it to me. And if they want to double block the Frostodon, the carry to dies, which also seems fine to me. 
Okay, so they take four down to 14. We also have Obosh still, which we can get maybe over the course of two turns. Yeah, I think we just play Soul Mage, take our beats. I guess, I guess our Frostodons are going to deal us four next turn. It's fine. I've taken four before. Okay, down to ten. Yeah, I was wrong about the last card being an elf there. We get to play Obosh, and then... We've got, I think we've got very good attacks now. Texas, think with the three months, appreciate ya. Double blocks. Oh, whoops. I lost my headphone out. Okay, this is fine. I'm scared I'm gonna roll over it. Guess I'll find it later. <laughs> okay. Clients use Cavalier's ability. It's gonna be pretty tough for my opponent to get out of this one. Three and one this league can get a four one prediction going. Yeah, this version has definitely felt a lot better than the uh Version without Obosh. I'm actually gonna wait on the Soul Scar Mage. I think against Blue Red Control, it's just so likely they have a shock that I think I'd like to try to go um, Mage with Wild Slash up next turn and then save the Soul Scar Mage from the Wild Slash or from the shock with the Wild Slash. This plays like Chunky Red felt the beginning of Pioneer. Yeah, I mean, if, if you the title is uh, Chunky Prowess, actually. Who did we lose to? Um, I can't remember actually. I think it's way better to make sure we kill the thing in the ice than it is to like have the upside of dealing two extra damage. We just lose the game if they have a second shock. In watching your videos, decided the format looked fun. Ran two leagues yesterday, ran to Lotus Field seven times, moved out of three times, zero other decks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry that uh, you had to experience that. Um, I, I also like <laughs> really think that both of those decks are bad for the format. I think the format would probably be better without both of them. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry for uh, <laughs> uh, the format's not uh, usually that bad. Seven Lotus Field opponents has got to be like the worst running ever, to be honest. Seven running into the Lotus Field seven times feels unreal. Of all my brews, which handles Lotus Field the best? Um, the Rogues deck and the Wizards deck, I thought were both pretty good against Lotus Field. Thinking about going Wild Slash into Untap, Light Up the Night, and Channel Shokazan. I think that's good because they're they're gonna chump block a spirit token on the Bone Crusher. Hmm. Okay, so maybe now I'll go stomp cast Bone Crusher and I can save Light Up the Night. Yeah, blue blue red control is is good against Winota and Lotus Field, um, and it's also like not that bad against Monarch Green too. I think I think blue red control is a great deck, but you you really can't just go into Pioneer. Dude, they have main deck Anger. Golly, I guess I'm just gonna hope they don't have any main deck counter spells though. They really usually often don't play many. Okay. So a land is lethal, or if we can just light the night again and then ramming up ruins them, that's going to be lethal. 
There's a Niv. Oh no. An untapped land. <laughs> An untapped land is lethal, I said. Um, okay, I'm just gonna blast him for five, grit my teeth, and hope they can't deal me 20. Did I say blue red has a good lotus matchup? I think so. I, th I think it's like slightly favorable. I could be wrong. In what world is Light of the Night better than Banefire? Um, the world where you actually read the card and understand that it, it costs one less mana against <laughs> one less mana against uh, creatures and planeswalkers. No! When at Ravenous turns, give them the extra nip trigger. Maybe that's better. But can be countered. There you go. Oh my gosh, I can't. One, one of these two cards kills Elvish Mystic on turn one in Pioneer, and the other card, and the other card can't. It's, it's not even a conversation. <laughs> I, I can't. I, <laughs> I know, I know one of them can be countered. So can literally every other card in the deck. It also has Flashback, Red Deck with Planeswalkers, too, you know. So it's so tilting that you're asking that question exactly when Spell Pierce is on the stack, too. <laughs> ah. Not favorite, seem worth taking a draw. Uh, yeah, you're right. It only costs one more mana, you know? It's like Lightning Strike versus <laughs> Lightning Bolt. It only costs one more mana. Just play Banefire. <laughs> it's just one more mana. Who cares? Just one measly mana. You have plenty of mana laying around. Damn, the two pack. Thank you, thank you. I think I'm gonna attack. My opponent's never blocking, and then I play Fable. Oh, okay, well, if they're blocking. I'll kill the thing in the ice. If that's for a deck tech, Dan. You can post a link in the chat. What do you stream tonight? You can't decide. Mm. Did my opponent just brick on Narset? They did. I think I'm gonna channel this. Rat Tribal, Evan. Rat Tribal. I've seen lists like very similar to this posted on Twitter. I think they're kind of interesting. I don't love that you're playing this three card combo deck necessarily in this format. Um, it's kind of the issue I have, I, I guess. Probably hold the mountain to discard. I guess I could have played the mountain player on Spell Pierce. That may have been better actually. Didn't get punished. I like, I like Moon Snare a lot. I, I think I think the list looks pretty good from what I can tell, to be honest. I'd play the fourth Strangle over the third Flame Blast Bolt. Like, nobody's playing Phoenix right now. I think Tezzeret looks great. Um, Inventor's Fair is probably a little ambitious. Like, your mana requirements are really harsh here. It's possible that the Inventor's Fair is fine, but I, I think I would probably just play, like, any other mana fixer instead, to be honest. I think we just attack, then light up the stage if we get to connect. Um, I've never played with this card. If you think this card's good, I, I think I could trust you on that, but I, I personally have never really found that card to be great. But I, I admittedly like also haven't like play tested with it that much, so I could be wrong about it. Um yeah, like a slow land over the Inventor's Fair, like cut one Inventor's Fair, Fifth Island for two slow lands is probably good. Sideboard's obviously like, kind of hard to comment on too. Um, I would probably play one of the the graph the, the two mana Graph Digger's Cage that stops Grease Fang, whatever that card's called, over like the second Graph Digger's Cage. But this looks pretty good overall. 
I don't know if the combo like it is kind of it may be tough to like assemble the three card combo in general, but that's just something you're gonna have to figure out after playtesting a bunch. Yeah, weathered runestone, thank you. Okay, so spell pierces the wild slash, just gain two life. Five cards of my opponent's hands. Chandra's a pretty good draw. Um Can I tell Evan to play taxes? I would never tell Evan to play taxes, except for all the times I have. I guess I'm casting this instead of putting Obosh in the hand. Just like the three extra damage is probably too good to miss out on. <laughs> yeah, I would, except for all the times I have done it, I would never tell Evan to play taxes. He's my favorite MTG artist, and why is it Mark Poole? <laughs> it is Mark Poole, actually. <laughs> it is Mark Poole. <laughs> you set me up pretty well for that one. Okay, another anger. Ooh, extra turn of temporal trespass? Wait, what? Were they secretly, are these Phoenix? Are they just Phoenix the whole time? Is Blue Red Control playing Temporal Trespass now? Are they gonna haul the Storm Giants to my Chandra? Nothing but questions, I guess. Yeah, I think we'll put the Mark Pool Island in the Destructotron wing. <laughs> they have Anger? Yeah, that's a good point. Not likely to be Phoenix without Anger. Uh, 50k channel points, two gifted subs are 10 bucks, David. Um, have you played the Mono Red Fires deck yet, Evan? I think you might like that deck. I, I, I've been liking that deck a lot, too. I recorded my video for Channel Fireball with that deck last night, and uh, <laughs> a lot of people did not have basic lands to get. Okay, so don't really want to attack with the hall into the Obosh. I'll just or into the the hall into the the giant into the hall. So I'll I'll grab Obosh. And the next turn I can maybe attack into it and they'll trade. David, uh, with the deck tech, if you to post a link in chat, I can take a look. Opponent's got Narset into something, hopefully not Days and Doing. Collective Defiance wouldn't be all that bad, to be honest. One mana shock would be great. Hey, whatever. <laughs> if I see even one person. Type the words Bane Fire in the chat. I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> um, Spike Bane Fire would actually be better here. I should have brought in these Rending Volleys, actually. <laughs> Pain Fire, yeah. Indeed. Eight Drum Outcome. Cool. I've always had a soft spot for the stack, the inspiring statuary, paradoxical outcome. And it is cool now that you have Mox Amber and Moon Snare and Springleaf Drum. Uh, I will say that like Karn tutoring your inspiring statuary is really slow. It's like the slowest ever. Um, although I guess Karn is actually pretty good to statuary out. Like just that's another good card for you to improvise out actually. Okay, I'm probably on board for it then. Yeah, I, I think I'm on board. I, th I actually think this list just generally looks sick. I think this is a format where Psy is probably pretty good. I, I will say like the one card that probably looks a bit weird to me is Reality Chip. I'm not saying it's definitely bad, as I've said about Reality Chip many times. This could be a good home for it. Like, you do kind of need like more too many creatures. The O4 will probably help you buy a lot of time. I like Inquisitive Puppet a lot. I think that card's probably going to be great. Okay, so I'm going to attack. 
They made this block last time. They're, they maybe learned their lesson. Probably shouldn't have played my land. Punished as I deserve to be. Um, yeah, I think this looks good. I I would I think this looks good. I would I think this is probably like ready for playtesting. Maybe you've already been playtesting. Mana looks good. Wait, hold on, wait, what, why are you playing Citadel? Just for a thirst for knowledge? Yeah, I wouldn't play Citadel. I would also probably play um, the four mana Tezzeret in the sideboard. I think that card's pretty good. So it's good for the insoles on the side. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna move into the insole cyber plan, you just need to have four citadel. Like, you can maybe play more citadels and like, I, I imagine like figuring out how exactly that transformative cyborg works is gonna is gonna take some time and some testing, but it's it's possible. Yeah, spell pairs is so good. Okay. This is like the card. <laughs> this is the card. Please block. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess that's fair. So we need to kill one other thing in the ice. I'm gonna bottom this Soulscar Mage. They only have one counter on this one though. Flip, 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 Adelphia. They reveal a treasure cruise in our set, and that's probably game. <laughs> I definitely clicked bottom, right? <laughs> I need to double check. It's bothering me. Aethergast, targeting mage. It doesn't it doesn't say in the game log. <laughs> it doesn't say in the game log. I did, okay. I think that's all she wrote. I'm trying to visualize the way where we win this game. I'm not seeing it. It in. All right, sorry, believers. Let's do let's do one more though. Let's do one more leap with the stack.